What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. So today I have a very exciting video for you guys. Uh, something came in the mail that I've been wanting for a long time and honestly, finally bit the bullet and just did it. It's a lot of money, but you know what? It needed to happen eventually, so why not now? I think we'll enjoy it and it's gonna free up a lot of room down there and I'm gonna be able to run my large downpipe and not have any issues. And uh, I guess we're gonna see how it goes, but you guys probably already know from the title, but I purchased an innovative traction bar. So this thing is pretty awesome. It's going to replace the factory cross member up front. And what this is gonna do essentially is not only strengthen up the entire front cross member because this tube structure is actually wicked strong. Uh, it's stronger than you know the factory subframe because that's all just a bunch of spot welds and stuff, but we'll see that once it comes out. But the factory radius rods just have like some big rubber bushings right here that go to the front control arm and that is not really good at holding the control arm under power from moving back and forth so naturally in the wheel well you have the wheel and when you're cranking on it like this the wheel naturally wants to push itself forward the wheel wants to come forward in the wheel well and uh, you know if you ever see a car on the dyno that doesn't have a traction bar or has some weak suspension bushings or something the wheel pulls forward in the uh, you know, on the ground in the wheel well, and uh, essentially when you get wheel spin and your wheels are going back and forth, that's how you're gonna get wheel hop and stuff like that. So right now in the rain, this thing wheel hops pretty bad. Um, so it's like, you can't like smoke them. I know if I were to do a nasty burnout, it would probably wheel hop like that too. And some of the roads around here just are pretty bumpy. So in order to combat all that wheel hop, because uh, wheel hop breaks stuff, we're gonna put this guy on with these new rods here that go to those heim joints. So you'll see how all this works once we get it in there, but we gotta start by taking this thing apart. So I'm gonna go ahead and bust both of the wheels off so it'll allow us better access to those uh, radius rods. And then we're gonna pull the whole thing down as one assembly. Um, but yeah, I'll show you guys exactly how we're gonna install this thing. All right, so we've got a few things to do here. Um, I guess one of which is remove these two bolts from both sides. Uh, these I've never taken out, so I assume they're gonna be uh, relatively stuck in there, but we'll probably throw an impact on it and uh, crank them out. And these rods right here I have removed before, but uh, there's two on top, I believe they're 17s, uh, on top of the control arm, so I'll have to bust those off. That's much easier with the wheels off, so we'll do those. And then we can work on to these guys right here. These three have to come off as well. And then on top, the motor mount has to come off. And I'm unsure of if I can use my front motor mount. I'm, it's looking like I'm not going to be able to. So I'm gonna have to figure out um, exactly what we're gonna do. Cause not having a front motor mount for me is, is gonna mean the engine's probably gonna torque a lot. So I'm gonna have to figure out a front motor mount solution. I know Innovative makes one for like a hundred and something dollars, but I wasn't planning on buying that. So if I don't have to, good, but I think I might have to which is sort of a bummer. But uh, yeah, anyway, I guess we'll see. It is what it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and start taking this stuff apart and uh, we'll see how everything comes up. All right, so that was pretty quick. Um, not too bad at all. Those radius rod ones were the hardest ones. I just double wrenched them with a 17 ended up getting them loose pretty easy that way. Otherwise, it was like impossible. But uh, yeah, they are looking really good. I dig it. Um, I hope these bars fit with the trans and everything. I'm sure that they thought about it, but I see. I know that that, that bar over there is a little bit moved because of the transmission or something. Um, but yeah, I'm sure it'll work. Um, I ended up taking it off with the motor mount and everything. Um, not sure if, it looks like maybe that three bolt thing right there might be for that motor mount. So I guess uh, we'll just have to see how it goes. But I'm gonna go ahead and try to fit this thing up in there. Uh, I think there's a couple other things that I might need to do, but I'll let you guys know if I come across anything crazy. So first things first, I put these uh, heim joints on. So I, all I did was uh, just pull the bolt out and these little pieces right here, just make sure that they go in the way that they are right here with the wide ends facing out and the other end fits nicely in here. So this joint can pivot and swivel and do all sorts of stuff, it's pretty nice. And uh, you know, you wanna leave these nuts threaded on. 
and then we're going to go ahead and thread those bars in but I'll probably wait till after I get it on that way it'll be easier and then we'll thread the bars on so I'm going to go ahead and bolt this thing up it looks like they want you to use the factory bolts because they did not give me any so I'm going to go ahead and use the factory ones and we'll get this thing bolted up so guys I got it all mounted under here and it's looking pretty good I put a little bit of anti-seize on everything and I'm gonna go ahead and screw in the rods now and uh, bolt them up and I'll show you guys that so guys I got everything installed well almost everything I got the bars in I got everything tightened up all the heim joints are all cranked down I tightened it on to the control arm and it seems really nice it seems really sturdy um, I'll lay under and show you guys but yeah you can see how much room we have down here now it's pretty crazy I'm gonna still try to put this center piece in I'm gonna figure out what bolts to it put that in and then we should be good I have the uh, rods in on both sides one thing I didn't mention is that you have to remove the factory uh, toe mounts that are up there which are these guys right here mine are all bent out of shape but yeah there's just three 14s on each of them for kind of rusty on mine but you know just busted them off and that has to come off in order for it to sit on there flush. But they give you these other mounts to put on there. Um, I don't think I'm gonna put them on. I think that they go where the bolts go for the uh, whole subframe down there. Could take it off, put them on, but I don't really see myself needing them or using them, so whatever. I'll just jack it up by the actual thing itself and uh, yeah, save the weight. But yeah, I think that the setup is really clean. It looks really sweet, so I'm pretty pumped. I don't know exactly how much this bar weighs. I guess I could see what the package weighs and weigh the old one and then see what kind of weight savings, but not really the goal here. Mainly just to uh, stiffen the car up, kill the wheel hop, and also make more room for our exhaust. So you can see up top, up top we have a ton of room for exhaust now. Like It's insane how much room we have. You could just see all the way over here, that's the mount. So it's all behind the radiator, honestly. It's directly underneath the radiator. So we have that entire area open now. It's pretty awesome. Tons of room so I can run my oil drain down there and I can run my exhaust and have plenty of space. Only thing now is I have to figure out how to make this factory mount do something. So I'm gonna look it up and see what Innovative has to offer and see if I'm going to buy their mount or maybe make something of my own. Because I do wanna have a front motor mount. I think torque mounts are important. And uh, I know it would look nice and be nice, and if I remove that, I could probably flip the turbo around, run the tur exhaust out that side, and it could be a whole different ball game. But I'm gonna avoid that for now. I think I'm just going to try to make a mount because I don't really feel like spending the hundred and something dollars on an innovative mount. Seems like kind of a pain that they make you buy their mount after you buy their traction bar. I feel like it should work with the factory stuff. Um, or it should come as a kit or some sort of adapter so that it would work like this, but guess not. Um, I'm gonna have to look into that and see what their mount looks like and see if I can make something of my own. So the only thing left that I have to do is put in that center section there. So I'm gonna figure out how to mount that in there. I'll show you guys that. And that'll be it for this traction bar install. I won't be able to actually test it out until I get my exhaust finished and all the rest of the car put back together. And then we can take it for a rip and see if this thing wheel hops. I mean, it doesn't really make enough power to wheel hop like crazy now only in the rain but you know, if I take it out in the rain it doesn't wheel hop then I know that uh, definitely made an improvement but once I make more power I guess we'll see gonna get a new map sensor or something like that alright guys so I did finish up the install on this um, I have made a little bit more progress on the downpipe it has been a little while since the last clip was filmed but everything is tightened up I got this center section in um, and I used the two bolts and uh, nuts that they gave me. I didn't use the spacers, not really sure where they want those, but whatever. So I still think that I may either build some kind of front motor mount or replace all the other mounts with uh, solid mounts. But that remains to be seen. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do just yet. Um, I am a little concerned. It looks like the traction bar bent up the radiator support brackets. I'm not sure why, or maybe they were always up like that, but I feel like they weren't. I feel like this bent them up a, a good deal, but hopefully everything is okay. I think it's fine, but the traction bar seems really solid. Still need to get an alignment, but the downpipe is coming out pretty good. Uh, it's 
you know, working down here smoothly. We have plenty of room, so I'm just trying to keep it as tight to the oil pan as I can. And uh, you guys will definitely see more of this once it's all said and done. But yeah, I think it's coming out really good. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And I will have to post a follow-up video on the traction bar. And we'll see what kind of performance increase we get from this traction bar. But hopefully you guys enjoyed watching the video. And if you did, be sure to like it and subscribe. You know, it really helps the channel grow. We're really growing pretty good now. We're almost at a thousand, so I'm pretty pumped. We're going to make it there pretty soon with your help. So go ahead and subscribe and uh, like the video. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.